HULOC is. Um, we're focused on providing infrastructure as a service in the public cloud. The way that we do that is we provide virtual data centers to our clients that are based on VMware. Uh, we're a VMware strategic partner. Our, our goal is really to change the way companies consume IT. We received the Service Provider of the Year for on the Americas last year from VMware in 2010. One of their strategic development partners, and we've been live with the vCloud uh, director environment. It's, it says beta on the slide, but we're now in production uh, since August of last year. Uh, our headquarters is in the Midwest in Indianapolis, Indiana, but we serve a diverse client set. They're in 11 time zones around the world. And our main focus, uh, which differentiates us a little bit from other cloud providers, is that we really focus on. Uh, mid-size and enterprise companies that have a significant investment in VMware themselves. So basically, if you're already using VMware, uh, you understand all the reasons that we use it as well. So what we've tried to do is just directly address the hype around cloud and talk not about what cloud is or uh, what I call a Jerry Bruckheimer, you know, use cases, but when is it the most useful for the enterprise and the mid-size enterprise companies? So what it's not. So these are this is a valid use case, but it's not certainly where most companies are finding value is in buying short burst capacity. So if you have an e-commerce application and your your volume of transactions goes up by ten times every Christmas season, then being able to rent another couple hundred computers for a few days is useful. But that's a pretty unique use case for most companies. So uh, we don't believe that the, the best way to start a public cloud for the majority is that way. Uh, it's also not about paying less than doing it yourself. So we're all buying the same storage infrastructure, different vendors, but we all have to pay for SAN technology, VMware licenses, and we have to train you know, really uh, smart folks to run the VMware environment. So while we may be able to provide that a little bit less expensively because we do it in volume, uh, we're certainly not, we don't have a magic bullet that allows us to do that for, you know, a fourth or a tenth of the cost that you would uh, be able to do it yourself. And it's clearly not about outsourcing IT. idea that uh, someday 100% of your assets might be in the cloud seems interesting. Again, it might be more of a science fiction story or 50 years from now, but certainly over the next few years, there are lots and lots of use cases for applications and data and latency that make a lot of sense to build your own private cloud in your existing data center and optimize those resources, but only reach out to the public cloud for, for things that make sense. And if you look at the Gartner hype cycle, you know, we believe that all those kind of hyped up use cases drove us up that initial curve, but then everybody gets to the top and they go, well, well that's all great but when I try to use cloud, it doesn't quite work the way it was advertised, and we have this trough of disillusionment where people are, are disappointed. So what we've learned is in working with lots of companies over the last five years that are trying to adopt a uh, cloud model or a virtual data center in the public cloud is that the three key things that they seem to get the most bang for their buck are when there's some kind of an incentive to act quickly. So you've got uh, lots of environments that need to be set up quickly, You've got a, a line of business that needs to move faster than uh, IT can move, and maybe they didn't give you enough notice, or they they uh, aren't in your budget, or your your efforts are all directed towards a more mission critical purpose. And even though this line of business from this uh, particular department is important, you, you can't necessarily put down everything you're doing just to serve them. Um, well, there's a lot of unknown. So if you have an application, it's new to the organization, you're not sure what resources you need. You don't want to go out and spend a half million or several million dollars on infrastructure and, and assets and realize only 3% of uh, all of that ever gets used. And if you change your mind later, so if you, as you learn more about what the needs of the application or the workload are, you might decide, oh, well, that's a better fit for the private cloud. So you put it on the public cloud initially, you learn about it, you realize uh, from security reason or whatever your, your organizational reasons are, you want to move it back. Um, or the size of it might change. So you put it out very small initially and it grows rapidly. You want your infrastructure to be able to adjust. So in the traditional model, when you needed to act quickly, 
um, you know, from a um, end user perspective, they would just call the help desk and submit a ticket. What they don't realize is that as IT people, both as your service provider and uh, in your own IT organization, there are a lot of decisions that have to be made in order to do something right. And that takes time. So with the cloud model, instead of making that many decisions, you really only have a handful. So when you go to uh, construct your virtual data center in the public cloud, you need to know how much CPU, how much RAM, storage, and if you're running it in a sandbox, then bandwidth isn't such an issue because you're not exposing it to the uh, public network. But if you are exposing it to the public network, you want to take into account how much network traffic it might use. And then at that point, you've got your virtual data center and you can proceed to using it. The other challenge is um, in terms of getting started. So once you initially decide you're going to run an application or you get the initial request, in addition to all the technical decisions you have to make, there are a lot of business decisions or procedural decisions that have to occur, processes that can engage. So you've got to design the RFP, you've got to write it, you've got to go out to maybe some vendors, uh, go through a vendor evaluation, then you've got to go through procurement, get approval, actually order everything, wait for the shipping, install it, take it through testing and QA. And at that point, you've made your big investment and you can start. Well, that doesn't always work for applications where you're not sure about what you actually need or if you need to move really quickly. So um, being asked to make the largest investment at the time when you or the, the business user is at least sure about what they actually need. So with the virtual data center in the public cloud, you can actually start the vApp or the application very small, and then as its usage grows over time, the expense grows in proportion to the usage. And you can see that um, one of our examples is DECA Financial. They saved 91% of their startup costs using this model, which is significant. And we're seeing people not only uh, save money doing it this way, but they're also able to try more ideas so the idea, the idea that uh, you know during the budget process, you may have 20 applications you want to do this year, and there may be 100, and a lot of them end up getting cut because they're not as high on the priority list. And sometimes you cut ones that actually might have worked out pretty well, or you end up funding ones that don't work. So in this model, if your startup cost is low and you only invest in things that are successful, you can actually try more ideas. What that typically looks like, you know, if you just look at examples of workloads, you kind of have three here. Scenario one, where you've got a successful application, you start fairly small, but then it grows uh, successfully by month over time. And that's what I call the idealistic model. So the application has some success, the users find value, the business is generating revenue, you know, whatever, whatever victory is described as, that application is succeeding. And you've got scenario two, which is the green section, it's an application that may have success initially, but then it plateaus. So the hope is that your, your infrastructure that you invested in that matches that plateau, but oftentimes you, you weren't sure where the plateau would be, so you might have over or under invested. And scenario three is even more common uh, when you talk about demo, demo, test, development, proof of concept environments or things that just don't work out the way that uh, people had hoped. Maybe the application launched too early and the, the users weren't ready for it. And that's where you go for four or five months and the application needs to go away. So again, if you had kind of made your investments around that and got everything set up as if it was going to grow and then realized it was actually going to be turned off, then uh, you would have waste a lot of energy and resources. Or if the application is already known that it's only going to be up for four or five months, the challenge you have is you can't go, you know, do, do you end up not buying the right equipment because you don't want to spend all that money for something that's going to be only around for a limited period of time, and then the application doesn't end up performing well. So one of the other components that we believe is really important to the enterprise is freedom to change your mind later. And we really break that down into two categories. One is the idea of not being locked into your decision. So if you do decide that uh, having a virtual data center in the private cloud is important at some level to your, your strategy, you want to be able to ensure that any workloads you move out to the public cloud 
are compatible with what you're running internally. So if you have VMware infrastructure today, you're using the VMDK file format, uh, which can be easily converted into OVF with the VMware tools you already have, and the OVF and VMDK format work inside the BlueLock vCloud. So you can move applications back and forth, and we'll actually show that in the demonstration. Um, and you can, uh, there's also browser-based upload and download capability. So it's really straightforward if you want to pick up a vApp or a VM and move it back and forth. The other um, flexibility that you want is as you learn more, you might want to mix and match the types of resources you have. So if you launch a VM or a vApp, or even just size your virtual data center based on your best information at that time, you may learn that the balance between CPU, RAM, and storage needs to change. So we see that a lot in applications. When they first launch, the, there's kind of a guess that there's going to be a lot of storage. Maybe you're going to retain the logs forever because you're just not sure if they're of any value. So you, you kind of guess that, uh, that you're going to need those. And the CPU and RAM might be fairly small because you're just going to take the application through development. But as you move forward and you promote the application into production and user, the user count starts to go up, you realize, well, those logs aren't really growing as fast as I thought, but I'm doubling my user count every month. So I need to resize it for more RAM and CPU. So over time, you're learning how better tune the V app or the virtual data center to run as efficiently as possible. And with the uh, virtual data center that we provide, you can change all those characteristics on the fly on your own. Or if you work with our managed services group, they're happy to do that for you. One other thing that we have learned uh, working with our clients is that ha having some sort of an inter enterprise engagement approach to the relationship is important. And that kind of breaks down into a couple things. One is our support. So uh, not all providers have live people and phones, believe it or not. A lot of the support comes from forums. And that's okay if, you're, if you have time to wait for uh, people in the community who are usually pretty bright, but uh, they're, not, they're not necessarily standing by the phone ready to help you. So you end up having to wait for them. Um, or if you're in an environment today where you're managing your own VMware infrastructure or you have a team that does that and they don't necessarily understand the cloud or the vCloud today, but you think they will over time learn how to manage it themselves, having our self-service interface, which looks exactly like your VMware environment, uh, gives them an opportunity to sort of take the steering wheel as soon as they're ready and we're happy to uh, support you through that process. And because we work on a pay-as-you-go model, there is no surprise in terms of the billing. All, the amount of resources you're consuming are always visible to you. And so at the end of the month, uh, there shouldn't be a shock that you, know, you have 20 VMs instead of the 15 that you had the prior month or that your storage went up because you can see that information all the time. We're now logged into a BlueLock virtual data center and you can see that we actually, uh, in our widgets corporation, this is my demo account, I can have more than one virtual data center. So that can be really useful if you have a test and development group or more than one and you want to manage them in a separate environment from production or you might have five or six production applications or even lines of business. Uh, you might have a DR virtual data center that you use as disaster recovery and then you might have a different one to host uh, production applications or maybe even um, proof of concept or pilot applications. So you, you can basically build as many virtual data centers as you want and come up with whatever ways make sense to you to uh, kind of manage them or separate them. And we have people that are doing both. We have people that have one virtual data center and they've got a ton of vApps inside of it and we have people that have six or seven virtual data centers that they've divvied up uh, amongst lines of business. So there, are, there aren't any hard and fast rules. What a virtual data center is, uh, if you look at virtual data center two, you can see it's really just a pile of processing power, memory, and storage. So my virtual data center is not very big for demo purposes, but these can be uh, you know, about as big as, as you would like. 
once you go inside of a virtual data center, it's all about applications. So if you're not familiar with uh, VMware's concept of a vApp, a vApp is more than just a group that contains multiple virtual machines. It actually has networking and firewall capability built into it as well. So it's the network stack and all the logic that surrounds grouping virtual machines together, which is a really great way to build applications. So if we go down and we look, we have a SharePoint environment, I've got a pair of web servers, I've got a database server, and I've got an application server all in my SharePoint V app. And what's nice about that is I can stop and start and power off things either at the VM level, which is what we're used to, or I can do that across the entire V app. You can also uh, clone V apps if that's something you want to do. So if you have a SharePoint template and you want to provision another one just like it, you literally just provision it right out of the catalog. So speaking of the catalog, there are two catalog concepts inside of the virtual data center. There is a public and a private catalog. So the private catalog is a catalog that's only for you or for your organization and your team members. So we'll pull up a list of the templates here. And again, this is my private catalog for my uh, demo corporation. This could be anything you want. What most of our clients do is upload all the templates they've already built in their existing VMR environment into the public catalog so that they're provisioning the same images, whether it's in their uh, private VMR environment or in the public VMR environment. So you can see we've got all these different versions of uh, Windows 2008 server, some with Oracle, some with SharePoint, some with a web server. I've got a Zimbra email server, and I've got an F5 uh, load balancer. I've gone in and marked that uh, this particular Windows host is the gold master. I believe technically those all should be marked gold master in my environment, but you can basically say that. You can go with when it's published, you know who the owner is, and you can see when it was created. You can also see which virtual data center it's stored in, and then how many resources it will take up in terms of just storing the template itself. The other concept is the public catalog, which is the catalog that BlueLog provides to all of its all of its clients. So it's a little sparse today in the demo environment, but um, the idea here is that if you just need a bunch of Windows servers and you don't necessarily care if they've got your backup or your antivirus agent on them because you're just going to do load testing, you could go in and spin up the Blue Lock resources. Uh, if you want to buy an F5 virtual appliance, you can go into our catalog and get the F5 virtual appliance, pull it into your environment, then you install your license key on it and it becomes yours and then any modifications that you make are specific to you. And we're running short on time, so I'm just going to go through two quick screens that I think are useful. And one is to show you how easy it is to um, manipulate the amount of resources that you have for a particular virtual machine. So I'll go into our QA environment. Let's say I'm going to do some uh, load testing in this environment, so I want to I want to see what the, uh, the resources are for the database server because I'm concerned. I want to go ahead and max that out so that when I do the load testing, I can run as many sessions through as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and take it from one processor to eight. We'll beef up the RAM. And I've uh, heard from my developers that they think that the application will perform better if I put the transaction logs on a separate disk and then where the database is stored. So I'm going to go ahead and create another disk drive and I'm done. So my, my virtual data center is not enough room to actually make this machine that big. Uh, but if I clicked OK, it would be sized for that. And then as soon as I power it up, it would see all of those new resources. I can do all of my testing. And then when I'm done, if I want to go and take all those resources away, I basically just take them away and power the machine back up. The other concept we talked about was the idea of being able to upload and download. So if we go into the catalog, the private catalog, and want to just upload a template that you already have that's in OVF format, I'll show you how to do that. It's really easy. 
basically just click here, click the upload button, you browse to where the OVF is on your workstation or if you've got it on a network drive, type in a name, pick a virtual data center you want it to go in, and if you want it to be published in the catalog, you put it in the catalog, click the upload button and it uploads. And the download option works very similarly, except in this case you'd be downloading a VF or a VM onto your local machine. So that was a quick demo. If you want a more extended demo, feel free to contact uh, one of our team and we can take you through a longer session. I'm going to hand it back over to Alicia. Thank you, Pat, for a great presentation and demo. So the first question is, how are you recommending buyers test the environment to make sure BlueLock is the right or wrong cloud for them? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so what we try to do is make sure that getting access to a virtual data center is really easy to do. So we have evaluation environments that you can get, basically kick the tires, uh, work inside the application. Uh, you work with our team, so if there are things you don't understand or aren't clear, we help you along the way. But the whole idea is we know that there isn't a single cloud that's the right fit for everybody. So we want to make sure you have the ability to access ours, take a look, and if it makes sense, then we can figure out how to scale it bigger. Great. Thanks, Pat. Um, next question. You said that cloud is not about paying less than doing it myself. So how much would a virtual data center cost? Another good question. Um, virtual data centers can be just about any size. So the way that we structure the pricing is based on how much RAM, CPU, uh, storage, and networking you're consuming. And there is a, a sheet that the uh, account executives can go over with you. And based on what you want to get started with, um, they can size that. And uh, like I said, again, the key is if you go through our evaluation process, there's not a cost for that. So that will at least tell you whether or not you're on the right path. And if you just need a very small virtual data center, they're very affordable. But at the same time, if you want to host a production application, we can scale it up to enterprise capability. Great. Another question that we've received, how do I get started in the cloud with a virtual data center and how quickly can I access the environment? Yeah, so getting started uh, is really easy. That was the whole point, right? We want to enable people to act quickly. So the way you get started is basically, you know, if you want to go right into production because you've already uh, gone through your evaluation process, it usually takes us about a day to get your virtual data center environment set up. And then the great part is once you've got that foundation, you can go in, if you're comfortable with the self-service interface, you can go in and create as many VApps and VMs as you like. So really, at, once we get the initial virtual data center built for you, you can move at whatever speed you're comfortable with. And again, if you're not completely comfortable with the environment, our managed service team will help you get through that. All right, we're going to try and squeeze in one last question. What is the difference between virtual data centers and the public cloud, or is it the same thing? Yes, yeah, so there, uh, this is definitely a cloud-based infrastructure. And what we've realized in talking to a lot of organizations is that just getting access to hundreds or you know, 10, 20, 100 VMs out in some place they're not even sure where they run, that's not quite giving them enough control and flexibility and management at least not what uh, most enterprises would want. So we worked with VMware to develop the concept of a virtual data center. Virtual data center brings in all the management that you saw today. It also brings in a level of network control, which we didn't show in the demo, but you can go in and set up your own VLANs, your own DHCP servers. You basically have full network management, VPNs, things like that. And it really just becomes this idea of you own a virtual data center and how efficiently you run it, how many VMs you have, how you manage everything inside the virtual data center, the same way you're probably doing today in your own physical data center is exactly the same. So it's just another, another version of how cloud is being offered, but it's our particular flavor. Thank you for joining us today.